The next deputant, Dr. Andre Go. Good morning. Good morning. You have five minutes, please go ahead. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Andre No. I am the Director of Education at Little Reyes Reptile Zoo as well as a resident here in Toronto. I am also an educator. I have taught uh, all the way from early years programs through post-secondary uh, as a full-time teacher, both domestically and internationally. Uh, I have a background in education as well as biology. Um, <clears throat> and I would really love to speak on some of the points that were brought up earlier today. But I think one of the big things is all of us here today are, at one level or another, here specifically for the welfare of the animals. And the welfare of all animals is extremely important. Um, <clears throat> as Mr. Goulet mentioned earlier, I think one of the key things is that we need to pay attention to the welfare of all the animals used in all of these programs, not just the prohibited animals. Uh, I think uh, a sort of licensing system that takes into account both educational messaging and oversight and uses the resources that we currently have. It is within the OSPCA's mandate to uh, oversee and inspect uh, organizations that do outreach, as well as the zoos, uh, <clears throat> as well as you know the body of knowledge and standards and code of ethics that is present in the CASA standards, which could be adapted or used in any sort of licensing system. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's also very, very important. Uh, the best route to manage the the welfare of these animals is is oversight. And again, Toronto as sort of leaders in Ontario and the nation and in fact the world, the eyes are on this city right now as to what we do and how we manage the system. And I think it's very important that the city is involved in, in the oversight and the use, of, the proper use of these animals. Uh, veterinary care is present in all of the accredited institutions as, and that includes things like stress management and evaluation of stress on the animals, rotation, as well as the like. Uh, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> there's a twofold issue here as well. It's, uh, we talk about the value of conservation and we've been focused very much on the value of conservation of the animals and the messages that we send that way. But there's also, uh, as an educator, there are very valuable lessons and tools in the use of animals in the classroom. Uh, I mentioned this during the stakeholders meeting as well, that as an educator, I was rather offended and disturbed that uh, the education community as a whole was not considered uh, to be stake, we're not considered to be stakeholders because they are incredibly valuable tools. There is a very large body of peer-reviewed academic literature dealing with the effects of animals in the classroom, dealing with uh, comparisons of live animals in educational programs to videos or demonstrations. Uh, there is a, a huge body of evidence dealing with, particularly with special needs uh, students and uh, and pro-social development and uh, interaction with peers and general social development with animals in the classroom. Uh, <clears throat> there is also a great deal of evidence uh, tied to the use of experiential learning and animals in the classroom to message retention, to enthusiasm, and to anchoring abstract concepts uh, in, to more real life scenarios. So those are all very, very important things. Uh, and I think to rob the students and the educators and the people of Toronto of this tool, uh, this very valuable education tool and uh, resource, as well as to potentially, uh, as has been mentioned repeatedly today, by prohibiting essentially groups that have oversight and have the welfare of the animals as their predominant focus, um, <clears throat> you do open the doors because the demand doesn't go away. Uh, there's still a demand for all of these sorts of things. It's just now the only people who can fill it would be essentially the fly-by-night operations that are already ignoring the bylaws and ignoring prohibitions on uh, Schedule A animals. And 
unfortunately, often, even if they do have the best intentions, uh, don't necessarily have the expertise or the ability to provide the care that's needed. And so the welfare of the animals is, uh, is at stake, as well as uh, their training and ability as educators. Uh, and so there's a loss of value to the educational community. Thank you for your presentation. Is members of the committee? We need quorum at the moment. We cannot proceed without quorum. We need one more member at this point. Councillor Burnside, Deputy Mayor Glenn DeBermaker, Councillor De Giorgio, please come to committee room number one. Okay, we have quorum. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Is any questions to the deputant? Questions? Vice Chair Karjanis. Sir, I'm, I'm not going to sound like I'm blowing up. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm trumpeting again. But I listened to what you said. Now, you are a teacher, an educator, you were saying, highly qualified? Uh, yes, I have been teaching for, it's been 20 years. Uh, and okay. so I have taught at various levels from early years to post-secondary. Uh, so you're, you're with the Board of Education? Pardon me? You're with the Board of Education? Uh, I'm currently, actually now... Or you where? I'm currently working with uh, Little Ray's Reptile, so I'm, I'm no longer a teacher. Right. I'm now doing curriculum but development. But you were a teacher in a classroom? Yes. How important is it for children with special needs to interact with such animals that we want to ban today? Uh, I would say interaction with animals has been demonstrated repeatedly to have both therapeutic and uh, very important socially, social development uh, pros. Uh, it definitely seems to affect pro-social development. Uh, interaction at the site of the animal Can has been translated please, out. I'm sorry for interrupting. Can I ask you please to zero in on children with special needs? and how they help, if you... Uh, it's been demonstrated to reduce disruptive behaviors, anxious behaviors. It has been demonstrated to increase pro-social behaviors in children with autism. So, uh, and that is over and above the levels you see with other interactive elements. So live animals in particular have been demonstrated with children with special needs. So a child that has special body. needs in the classroom of 20 or 22, that and the teacher has to spend more time with that child. If this animal that we want to prohibit here today was taken away from them, the child will have adverse effects, which means the teacher will have to spend more time with that child trying to calm that child down, taking away more time from the teacher to be able to spend with other kids. Yes, uh, to, to remove uh, something that is part of their environment that they have relied on would certainly be disruptive, especially to a number of students with, uh, with special needs. Uh, currently, the legislation, as proposed, doesn't really remove most of those animals uh, because they wouldn't be present in the classroom anyhow as the, uh, the ones that would be prohibited would be things that are currently on the prohibited animals list already. So they shouldn't be in the classrooms to begin with because they shouldn't be in private ownership in the city of Toronto. Um, but there are benefits to the inclusion of some of the animals on the prohibited animals list because they can't be maintained by the general public in their home doesn't mean they don't have exceptional value in intermittent educational programs with in an educational setting in the years or institutions. That you've taught was there an instance where you had a child with special needs and an animal was used in order to address the the needs of that of that child certainly uh, can you give us an example in how the child was uh, affected helped yeah uh, blue tongue skinks are a fairly common relatively docile reptile 
they're hypoallergenic and they're fairly calm. Because of their calmness and their relative size, they're about this large, they actually do trigger the deep pressure reflex. And we have a number of students uh, with, we had a number of students with autism in one of the classrooms that did react to that and it actually did help to calm them down. We had students with uh, severe disruptive behaviors that had attention hyperactivity disorder that actually we were able to get to sit calm at, by using actually the animals as a reward where we would, if the student was able to sit calmly for 10 minutes and do their work, they could sit calmly and work next to the reptile for 20 and they would literally sit quietly for 30 minutes whereas without it, uh, it would be a struggle to keep them still for five. My last so, question. If we make the decision that we're going down the road today, will that be harmful or helpful to the children in general and to the children with special needs? Are we doing the right thing with what is being suggested? Or should we take a step back, look at it, and, 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 and do a wider consultation, especially with teachers, in order to see how it affects kids? What would you be your recommendation as an expert that's been out in the field as a teacher and, and working in your capacity right now? As an educator, I feel that the educational community certainly needs to be informed and needs to be a part of this decision to remove uh, a tool like this, to remove the benefits of using animals in the classroom uh, would be a great disservice to both the edu educational community and to the students uh, that we're trying to educate and to the community because by having these animals, we are, in addition to teaching them the subject matter they need and to helping them behaviorally, we also are encouraging empathy, stewardship, and responsibility. And these are all very valuable traits, not just in students, but in members of the public in general. And we are, in many ways, helping to train our future leaders and our future citizens. So it would be a great disservice. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, thank you for your presentation.